He was just a teenager when he died. The last crown prince of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. He was laid to rest, laden with gold, and eventually forgotten. He was laid in a tomb, laden with gold. His tomb was discovered in 1922. Since then, the modern world estimated about what happened to him, with murder being the most extreme possibility. In almost 80 years, Tut, as he was named, had undergone a CT scan that offers new clues about death and life, and also provides precise data for accurate forensic reconstruction of Tut, the pharaoh. Forensic reconstruction means the process of creating a face on skull to know how the person looked like when he was alive. Tut was a pharaoh. Pharaohs were rulers of Egypt and were considered as God. As King Tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient place known as the Valley of Kings, an angry wind stirred up dust. Dark clouds covered the desert sky all day and now were covering the stars. It was 6 p.m. on the 5th of January 2005. Tut, the world's most famous mummy, glided his head into a Connecticut scanner which was brought at the place to know the medical mysteries of this young ruler who died more than 3,300 years ago. All afternoon, the tourists from around the world had reached the cramped, rock-cut tomb, 26 feet underground, to pay their respects. The guests gazed at the paintings on the wall and looked at Tut's face, which was visible from the outer lid of the coffin. Some visitors read guidebooks and whisper. Others stood steady, perhaps thinking about Tut's death in his late teens, or wondering if Pharaoh's curse was really true. Stood steady, perhaps meet Sahi Hawass, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. The mummy is in very bad condition because of what Carter did in 1920s. Carter? Carter? Howard Carter was the British archaeologist who, in 1922, discovered Tut's tomb after years of searching. The contents in the tomb were surprisingly complete. The contents are the richest royal collection ever found and have become a part of Pharaoh's legend. Stunning artifacts, their brilliance indicates resurrection. Resurrection means coming back to life after death. At the time of their discovery, it caused a sensation, and even now, it gets the most attention. But, Tut was also buried with everyday things, which he would want in the afterlife, board games, a bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine. After months of recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures, Carter began investigating the three nested coffins of Tut. In the first, he found a shroud with garlands of willow and olive leaves, lotus petals, and cornflowers. It was an evidence that Tut was buried in March or April because these flowers are grown in this period. When finally, he reached the mummy, he ran into trouble. The raisins that covered Tut were insanely hardened, cementing Tut to the bottom of his gold coffin. Carter wrote, No amount of legitimate force could move the raisins. What was to be done? Let's see. What can I do to loosen the raisins? The sun can beat down like a hammer in this far south in Egypt. I'll use it to loosen the raisins. For several hours, he set the mummy outside, in blazing sunshine, that heated it, to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. But even then, the raisins were not loosened. He reported, the material, had to be cut from below the limbs, and trunk, to make it possible to raise the king's remains. He reported, the material. In Tut's time, the royals were very wealthy, and they thought, that the kings could take their wealth with them, when they died. That is why, King Tut was lavished with glittering goods, precious collars, necklaces and bracelets, rings, sandals, and the iconic inner coffin, all of pure gold. Carter had already told that the raisins couldn't be loosened with legit methods. Legit means legal. So Carter used wrong methods. Carter's men removed the head of the mummy and sliced every major joint. Carter wanted the treasure. When they had finished, they reassembled the remains on a layer of sand in a wooden box, the bed where Tut rests now. Archaeology has changed substantially in these decades, focusing less on treasure 
and more on the fascinating details of life and mysteries of death. Whereas Carter focused on treasure. Now, archaeology uses more sophisticated tools, including medical technology. In 1968, that is, more than 40 years after Carter's discovery, a professor x-rayed the mummy and revealed a shocking fact. Below the raisins that covered Tut's chest, his breast bones and front ribs were missing. Today, diagnostic imaging can be done with computed tomography, that is, CT. By this, hundred of x-rays are put together to create a 3D virtual body. What more would a CT scan reveal of Tut than x-ray? Could it answer the two questions, how did he die? And how old was he at the time of his death? King Tut's death was a big event. He was the last of his family, and his death was the death of the dynasty. But the details of his passing away are still unclear. Let us go into the past. Amenhotep III, perhaps Tut's father or grandfather, was a powerful pharaoh who ruled almost four decades at the 18th dynasty's golden age. His son, Amenhotep IV, succeeded him and started a strange period of ancient Egypt. This new king promoted the worship of Aten, which means the sun's disk. He changed his name from Amenhotep to Akhenaten. Akhenaten means servant of the Aten. He also moved the capital from Thebes to Akhenaten. Remember, Amenhotep IV changed his name to Akhenaten. He changed the capital from Thebes to Akhenaten. That city, Akhenaten, is now known as Amarna. He further shocked the country by attacking Amun. Amun was the major god. He smashed the images of Amun, the god, and closed his temples. Meet Ray Johnson, the director of University of Chicago's Research Center. This must have been a horrific time. The family that had ruled for centuries was coming to an end. And then, Akhenaten went a little wacky. Why do you think, he said, Akhenaten went wacky? Wacky means crazy. Because Thebes was the religious capital and the major god was Amun. But Akhenaten moved the capital to Akhenaten and smashed images of the god Amun. After the death of Akhenaten, a mysterious ruler named Smenkhkar, Smenkhkar appeared and exited without any trace. And then a very young took the throne named Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun means the living image of Amun. King Tut, as he is widely known today, he restored the old way. He ruled for nine years and died at the age of 19. There are many more mummies in Egypt. How many? No one knows. The Egyptian Mummy Project has recorded almost 600 mummies and is still counting. The National Geographic Society has donated a portable CT scan machine for scanning the mummies. A CT scan scanned the mummy head to toe and created 1700 x-ray images in cross section. Tut's head, which was scanned in 0.62 mm slices to register its intricate structures, gave a frightening detail in the resulting image. The night of the scan, workmen carried Tut from the tomb in his box. From the underground tomb, they climbed the ramp and rose a hydraulic lift that held the scanner. Twenty minutes later, two men came out. They ran to an office nearby and returned with two plastic fans. Why? Because the million dollar scanner had quit because sand entered into a cooler fan in it. A guard joked, curse of the pharaoh. However, the substitute fans worked well enough to finish the procedure. After some hours, Tata was again laid into his coffin. By the data collected by the scan, a technician pulled up images of Tut on a computer screen. A gray head took shape, and the technician spun it in every direction. Neck vertebrate appeared. Other images revealed the hand, views of rib cage, and skull. As of now, the pressure was off. Sitting back in his chair, Zahi Hawass smiled. I didn't sleep last night, not for a second. The mummy was in a very poor condition and it was difficult to get its 3D image. I was so worried. But now, I think I will go and sleep. By the time they left, the wind had stopped. The winter air lay cold, like death itself. 
just above Tut's tomb, stood Orion, the constellation that was considered as soul of Osiris, the god of afterlife, watching over Tut.